Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Louise Spear, and I'm going to be chairing this session, Collections and Catalogs from West to East. Um, I have a couple of preliminary announcements that were passed on to me by Brenda Nelson Strauss. First of all, she wanted to remind everyone that the silent auction ends at 1040 sharp. So if you want to get in a last minute bid, you should be sure to do that right after this session. Uh, the other thing is a small program change um, in the following session this morning. Um, Philip Carley is not able to be present. And so um, starting at 1.30, Michael Beal will be speaking. And um, I, they have three great speakers for that session. I have a feeling they will fill up the whole time period. Um, OK, for this session, we have um, three wonderful presentations. And I know all of them are just packed with information. Um, so hopefully we can get going and they'll all have time uh, to share what they've brought for us. Um, we're really honored um, to have a speaker who's traveled from Mexico to be with us. Um, that's Mariela Salazar Hernandez. And she's the head of the Department of Conservation and Management of Collections at the National Sound Archive of Mexico. She has participated in the development of Mexican standard videographic and phonographic documents, conservation guidelines, and implementation of a chapter on sound bites for conservation of different formats, which will be published soon in Spain. She is currently a master's student in library and information science at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Um, and her paper was um, also written by a fellow researcher um, at the university, Perla Rodriguez Resendez. Um, so uh, her paper is Panorama of the Conservation of Sound Archives in Mexico. And I present Mariela. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to participate in the ARC conference. Thanks to ARC to give us the opportunity to participate in this meeting. The preservation of audio archive is one of the most important challenges in Mexico. Former, even through more than a decade ago, archivists began to address to the issue of sound archive in academic forums. There is still a lack of awareness of the heritage value of audio documents, sound recording that do not have effective conditions of storage, cleaning, temperature, humidity are lost daily. Also, two sound archive had been inadequately handled and the super present progressive deterioration thanks to the fragility of the media in which they were recorded. In this context, the paper described the overview of the methods, techniques, and technologies commonly used in the preservation of audio archives in Mexico. The history of peoples is also right with sound.
Forever a century, the music, the voice of the shapers of history, indigenous language, the soundscapes and sound art have been recorded in sound bite. The recognition of the value of the audio documents is relative recently. Even when the first sonar chips that was created in Mexico, days from 1898, the sound heritage began to be the subject of public debate and interest over 15 years. Prior to this day, there have been the same professional interest archivists who have banded together in seminars for the change of methods and preservation techniques. To understand the sound archive panorama in Mexico, we, will, we would like to offer the vision in two ways. Wait. One, to listen some of the most important sound collection from Mexican archives. Two, show information and date about the number of archive sound collection and it is location. Today, we know that the first sound recording was recorded by Carl Lundholz in, in 1898. Please, track two. Thank you. This is a song recording for Raramuris people. The Raramuris are an indigenous people from Mexico. This song recording is important because, unfortunately, the indigenous song, in same, ca in same case, are in the risk to disappear. The Mexican national anthem recording in 1901 is another important song recording made in USA in Candy, New Jersey, in a shellac disc. Acre with the research, Pavel Granados, Tristezas, a bolero recording in 1907, is the first song recording in Green Now at Mexican popular music. It is also important to include in the first song recording category the voice of Porfirio Diaz in the Michelle's the same to Thomas Alba Edison from, from the castle of Chapultepec in 1909, a year before the Mexican Revolution. Track two, please. Contestación que el señor general Porfirio Díaz, presidente de la República Mexicana, da a una carta del señor Tomás A. Edison. Chapultepec. Agosto 15 de 1909, señor Tomás A. Edison, ahora estimado y buen amigo, me refiero a su grata 8 de julio. Yo también como usted recuerdo con placer el tiempo aquel en que tuve la satisfacción de conocerle y conocer sus atrevidos exper experimentos, haciéndome de partícipe de su fe inquebrantable en el grandioso porvenir de las ciencias físicas. There are a few recordings of the late 19th century found in Mexico. Most of the recordings were found in archive abroad. It is likely that the first sound archive created in Mexico came 1939, thanks to research work performed by linguists and anthropologists from the National Institute of Anthropology and History. The research recorded right records, music, and indigenous language of Mexico. 
the sonar chief of the National Museum. Sorry. The sonar chief of the National Museum of Anthropology and History, History actually has some collection of traditional music and voice of indigenous people from Mexico. American research such as Thomas M. Stanford, Enrieta Yurchenko, Raúl Helmer did an important work in recording the, the sound patrimony in Mexico. In fact, the Stanford Collection and Helmer Collection were, were recognized as memory of the world in Mexico. Thanks to the work of this American research, today we have an important sound patrimony from the last century. Listen a sound recording from Thomas Stanford. Please. <laughs> The radio was produced the largest sound collection from the, the end of the 1920s. From these years, there is recording for XCW, La Voz de America Latina, where we conserve the spot of Café Aspirina. Please. Say, say Café Aspirina, please. Okay. Um, from 1934 to 1958 was the golden age of radio in Mexico because the most important intellectuals such as Salvador Novo, Javier Villarrutia, and Alfonso Reyes wrote screen, screenplays for the radio. Concerning to academic radio, it is important to underline that Radio Nam. Yes? start its transmission on 1973. Radio Nam recorded voice from Gabriel Garcia Márquez, Octavio Paz, Carlos Fuentes, Juan Rulfo, and Roberto Rossolini. Thanks. Señor Don Pancho, tiene dolor de cabeza, no puede salir del rancho, porque es muy grande el dolor, su cara pálida y mucha, parece la de un cadáver, pero recuerda Juan Lucía, lo que le diera un doctor.
Radio Educación made, made also an important production for more than 80,000 radio programs. Each collection has popular music from Mexico. The Archive of Radio Educación recently was recognized by Memory of the World for having documents over the last 20 years music from the Encuentro de Jananeros. song collection in Mexico is the archive from the Sound Archive of the Commission of Mexican Indigenous People developed. This archive has more than 300,000 indigenous music, language and radio production from 21 indigenous radio stations in Mexico. Following a quality review of some of the most important song collection in Mexico, I invite, I invite you to look at this map. They'll show the, distribu the distribution of sound archives. We can see that the most important are loca located in the center of Mexico. Mm. Well, in Mexico City, state of Mexico, and Puebla. It represents 83 percent of the total sound archives. Also of the north, in Sinaloa, Durango, just 3.7 percent, while in the Pacific region, comprised of Veracruz, Oaxaca, Aguascalientes, Colima, and Guerrero. This specialized centered amount to 9.4%. While in the southern, in the southern, like Campeche and Yucatan, figure only 3.7% of the total. It is important to consider that 47 of these files, 80, 88% are owned by public institution and only 12 are private. However, there are several institutions or private collectors who have important sound bite, but they, but they have not formed a sound archive to preserve them, nor have approached institution for preservation. As you can see through this map, our country is located in Tropic of Cancer. We have an extreme temperature and high humidity. For example, in the north, we have in the north we have what is the weather minute? <laughs> temperature up to 50 degrees Celsius or more in spring time. While in South we can have a higher, a higher relative humidity of 70%. Also, in the center of Mexico City, we have drastic change in temperature and humidity in one day. This fact is not very favorable for the conservation of sound bites and differ requires large investment or special buildings to control humidity and temperature of such collection. In fact, only seven 
0.6% of sun collection have systematic size temperature and humidity control. Although it is not worth it that are the files that have a greater number of audio files, including the National Sound Archive, the National Commission of, for the Development of Indigenous Peoples, Radio NAM, and Radio Educación. Natural disasters are another factor that fit the permanence of sound recordings. Earthquakes, floods, and fires are risk factors as a human hero resulting from lack of knowledge and training of people who are in charge of this archive. Mexico began more than a decade risking his own memory. Today, we know that more than 900,000 documents record an analog, analog media are protected. Okay, some proposed art build critical and practical groups working in a systematic and organized, an organized way around some files. Two, since to responsible for cultural police and sound archive and documents. Three, to influence the formation of a group of professional training in handling sound archive driving training programs in the country in a systematic and continuous. Four, the sound documentation is an emerging discipline from Mexico that should be part of the plans and curricula of university and higher education. Hence, it is necessary to focus on creating other lines of multidisciplinary research into sound files. Five, create a social network of sound documentation, allowing a space for the exchange of ideas and projects for the sound archives. The risk of loss of sound collection is latent. There is much work still to do. Financial so resource, training, collaboration between files continue in projects. Well, we have thanks the first steps, but the future demands a lot of work. Please. Thank you very much for your attention.